Welcome back to the Diabetic Diet Show. Hi everyone. Today's show is Roasted Chicken Peanut number 228 with a special dressed sauce. I have pasta and a garlicky green beans. It's easier to do than it is to say. So I'm going to make some roasted garlic and I'm going to have two boneless chicken breasts. Then I'm going to have six ounces of a ditelli type pasta, some kind of pasta. I bought these because I kind of really like these. They um, say they're roasted tomato with mozzarella. You can use any kind of pasta. Just like regular pasta, you just have any kind of pasta noodles, whatever you want to use. It's your show too, okay? Next, uh, let's see, green beans. I just got some fresh green beans. You could use fresh or you could use frozen. I don't like to use canned if I don't have to because canned has a lot of salt in it and I'm trying to cut down on salt and sugar being a diabetic. And then, of course, you know my favorite, garlic. I'm going to use two, maybe three cloves, depending on the size of the garlic. Because if a little bit is good, a lot of it is better. Okay, next, I'm going to use some peanut butter, just about a spoonful. Um, not a lot of that. You know, peanut butter is strong. And same thing with rice vinegar. Um, don't use too much rice vinegar. It's fairly strong. I also need to put in some kind of sauce. Now I have cilantro sauce. I bought this in packages, cut open the package, and oddly enough, that was the size of the package. That's what I'm gonna use. I tasted it, it is not spicy. I was joking. I told Barb it, it tastes like grass clippings with olive oil. So, I know cilantro is like kale, it's supposed to be good for you. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use it. It's what I wrote in the recipe originally. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> okay, and uh, I'm going to use some onion powder, garlic powder, um, some ground yellow mustard. And I should have that up on the top shelf. I'll grab that. Some smoked paprika will be up there. Now, as an option, you can use a tablespoon of cayenne pepper. Myself, personally, I'm not going to do it today, but it'll make it taste a lot better. So, I need to turn on the burner and get the burner getting hot here for the pasta. I have the water boiling. through the miracles of TV. The water is boiling. Here is the noodles. Oodles and oodles of noodles. Typical childproof bag. Let's make it hard for James to open the bag so we can watch him on YouTube struggle with the bag. I take my special pasta basket that I probably overpaid for, but I just love it. I had to have it. So I get my water boiling here in a few seconds. It was boiling, it should pick back up again. And let's see what else I wanna tell you. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to prepare the ingredients and we're gonna make the sauce. Um, I have the uh, chicken breasts here. I've par cooked them to speed this up. We're basically going to have to cook them in a hurry. Um, you would want to put them in the oven and preheat the oven to 450 degrees. And um, of course you want to do the, the boiling water for the pasta. Don't forget to not salt the pasta water until it's boiling so you don't pit your pans. But you do want to salt your water once it does get boiling because you really need some salt in things. I know we're all trying to not use salt, not use sugar, but to be honest with you, if you don't use something, you know, to make it sweet, I even bought some stevia. 
I have a, um, the artificial sweetener in case I want it for something. But you got to put a little salt in. So I'm going to use a uh, garlic sea salt. So that should be good. Um, what else do we need to think about here? Um, so I have to do the beans and I have to do the garlic. So I have to get them going. And then also I have some mayonnaise here um, that uh, you want to use. And I just squirted some in these little containers. And if you're going to cook a lot, you want to buy some containers. I get these from a wholesale food place uh, nearby here. Uh, I've seen them at the regular grocery stores too. They come in a big sleeve. And of course you squirt bottles. I just get these from the dollar store and I put my vinegar in these. I have red wine vinegar, I have white vinegar, apple cider. Today I'm going to use a, um, an apple cider vinegar and I've put a little bit in here for what I want. Once again, if you're just watching the show, watch a show and enjoy it. You don't necessarily have to write things down. All you have to do is just go to my website, which is James T D D S dot blogspot.com. All the ingredients are going to be listed there. And before I forget, in the lower right hand corner is a subscribe button. And I'm on a drive to get my first thousand subscribers. So if you guys would click on the subscribe button, I would greatly appreciate it. Hit the bell so when I drop new videos, you'll get notified. And then later on, after I get a thousand subscribers, I can run a contest. And whoever my early uh, subscribers were, I'll immediately send you out something cool like um, coffee cups and um, I'm planning on next year giving away kitchen appliances. I've already started ordering them. If you've seen that new fancy can opener that undoes the lip around the can rather than cutting the can, I ordered an extra one of those. I'm going to save it and I have to wait till I get a thousand subscribers to give it away. So the water is starting to boil on the pasta. Let's get going on these other ingredients and we'll have dinner here in just a few minutes. So this is my garlic. I'm just going to knock off the ends on the garlic just like that. Break it. I try not to pop it. I did one the other day and it went shooting across the room and hit the front door. I didn't, I didn't use that one. I use a different one. I blame Barb. Whatever, whatever goes wrong, I blame Barb and we'll um, put them in the blooper reels. Thank you, dear. <laughs> the problem is most of my show is a blooper, so I can't put my whole show in the blooper reel. Thank you, dear. And you've probably seen me, I take, and if I'm going to do a lot of garlic, I put this in a jar and I shake these and it takes the paper off. And you know, it depends on the garlic, whether it's refrigerated or how fresh it is. It's, um, it's kind of hit and miss with taking the paper off garlic. I find that sometimes it can be really difficult to take off, and other times they come off real easy like they are today. That one's a split, looks like it was more than one, but I'm going to use my favorite new toy, which is my garlic cutter that I bought. I don't know what I paid for it, but I'll tell you I didn't pay much. I ordered it online, and I've been so happy I did. It does such a good job. Um, a little hard to clean because the inside edges have ripples rather than being smooth. But you just do like this. Cuts it right up. Looks really cool. Let's get the pasta in here. See how easy it is when you have something like this? Now, of course, the old way is to take, if you don't have enough water, is to do like that, and then scoop it out. And when I scoop it out, I'll scoop it out in this. Okay, hang that out of the way. Now, I am so happy with this garlic thing. It is fantastic. And then, of course, if you want to cut up a red, green, or yellow pepper. And you don't have to discard this top stuff. You can save that and use that later. But all I do is stick my thumb inside like that, pull up, and pretty much out comes the ingredients. Turn it upside down. There's going to be three or four splits. 
I just do the splits. Then I get these chevrons. And what's nice about the chevron is you can kind of push it down and cut your strips. Fairly easy. Some nice strips here. Slow down a little bit since I'm using a knife. I felt the knife touch me. I don't think I tagged myself, but I came close there. Okay, got that. Now, park those. Let's think about the beans. So let me show you a few of these and then I'll fast forward it. Just knock the ends off the beans, just like this. This would have been a good job for Barb. Hey Barb, why don't you cut up a thousand beans for us? You know, you probably don't even have to do that, to be honest with you. You could probably eat them as is if you want. I just always do it. The pasta is almost done for that brand that I had there was three minutes, four minutes roughly. So that's almost done. So now I'm going to take these to the sink and rinse these off. So some people like to use vinegar and then water or water and vinegar and water. I just rinsed them off. It just um, it gets whatever film is on them. You'll feel the difference. And once I got it over there and I got it by the light, I could tell. I had some that I wasn't happy with. They didn't look exactly perfect the way I like them. I'm just going to take that off for a minute. Let's pull this back. And let's go ahead and get some olive oil in here. A couple of turns of the pan. And we'll get that going. Mustard, paprika. I need to drain my pasta. I'm just going to run to the sink with this really fast. So this is where you'd put your chicken on a frying pan that will go in the oven or a cookie sheet. You should have your oven preheated to 450 degrees and go ahead and put in the chicken. I have par cooked it so I just need to rewarm it. So uh, the beans, let's get the beans in the water here and we'll get that to come up to a boil. Just going to take and finish cleaning these up just a little bit. I want to convert these matchsticks to some little cubes.
have a mixing bowl. I use my bench scraper. I got this at that wholesale food place where I get my stuff. Another invaluable tool. Now I want to take and uh, put my vinegar in here with this. So I just put some vinegar in here. Okay, have that good. Here's some pepper. Let's put some pepper in here. Here's my sea salt. Now, somebody I'll do a 3D TV. <laughs> These have to marinate for a little bit, so let's, let's let them sit. Everything is cooking along here real good. It smells really good, so I'm going to go ahead and pull these beans off here. Let's kill this burner. Just set them there for the moment to cool. They're looking really good. I just boiled them just for a little bit. I just pull them out like this. Just to get them to stop cooking. Looks real good. Pull these out of here. I like the way they look. I'm just going to pull these beans out of here. Just like that. Beans are one of those funny things to scoop out of a bowl. Here's my beans. Chicken. My sauce on top of that. Get my mayonnaise in here. Just like that, and the remaining of the sauce, let's get that in there. Let's grab a little bit of paprika. Let's just do a pinch or so here. First was a pinch, the second was the or so. Mustard. Mustard's fairly strong. You don't want to put a lot of this in. It's kind of like dill. Peanut butter. <clears throat> Thank goodness for peanut butter. Put that in there. Let's get these hot beans in here to melt this peanut butter. Let's 
Chicken sounds and smells good. Pepper, some salt, a little more salt over here in the pasta, a little more pepper over here in the pasta. And I'm just going to take all this, dump it in here with the chicken. Of course, you would do this after you pulled it out of the oven, but like I said, mine was already pre cooked, so I was already that far ahead. On that, here's my pasta. Pasta's gonna go right in there like that. I only need a couple of minutes for this, just so that everything gets warmed up. Because really, when you think about it, at this point, everything is really cooked. So what I like to do is just kind of start to clean things up a little bit, get things back in some semblance of order. Everything is warming up and smells really, really good over here. So I think maybe just give a little bit of a shake, but I have to put this garlic in and get this going here. So let's just go ahead and pull this off here. Just get some of this garlic in here. You don't want to put garlic in too early because garlic, especially if you shred it like this, it's going to burn. And burnt garlic is not real good tasting. But cooked roasted garlic is really good and it will taste sweet. So what, now what I'm going to do is just kind of start to turn things over here a little bit. So I can just kind of blend everything together. Find a little piece of paper in there that don't belong. And this meal is done. All I have to do is plate it up. Let's plate this up and see what it looks like. It smells really, really, really good. And what's nice is with the countertop like this, you don't have to worry about putting a hot pan on it. Just make sure that's turned off. And I'll just grab a breast here. Put it right out there in the middle. And just put some of this around. It smells really, really good. You need to try this. Use whatever kind of pasta you have or want to buy. There's a lot of different pastas. But I'm telling you, the smells coming off this is like a five-star restaurant. And it was so simple. I mean, you got some garlic and some onions and some peppers and you know, whatever you want to put in it. And a couple of chicken breasts. It doesn't get any easier than this. That's the show for the day. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.